off from monkeys, dogs, and cats, and even cows. They want to give animals legal rights. Gary Matsumoto has the story. Every day, we consume animals, four-legged and feathered, medium rare, and with special sauces. But Elsie the cow might someday be protected by something akin to what our founding fathers envisioned for human beings, a bill of rights for animals, a right not to be eaten, for instance, or ridden. <laughs> At prestigious law schools across the country, like Georgetown and Duke, law school professors are planning courses in animal law. The law professors say they don't want to prevent people like me from helping McDonald's sell a trillion hamburgers. But they do want to enact laws that could eventually affect what we eat and what we watch. To start with, an animal right to liberty that could free Willie, Cheetah, or even Flipper. The animals that would, might have a right to liberty uh, would be those that are highly sentient, that is, uh, thinking and aware and cognitive, quite possibly for a dolphin, an, or an orca, perhaps a chimpanzee. The envisioned laws would stop experimentation on our primate cousins, but already there are indications they could affect what we put on our dinner tables. The Smithsonian Institution canceled a panel discussion on foie gras, a goose or duck liver pate, because it included a taste testing. The reception was organized by the author of this book, Chef Michael Ganor. We cannot allow ourselves to let any extreme group propel their own agenda this way. Our barnyard animals aren't about to become protected species, but in the long run, they could challenge the view that we have an inalienable right to make them lunch. In New York, Gary Matsumoto, Fox News. And joining us to face off on all of this, lawyer Stephen Wise, a former president of the Animal Legal Defense Fund, and to his right, lawyer David Schmaman, a commercial litigation specialist. He is against giving legal rights to animals. Welcome, gentlemen. Thank you for being with us. Thank you for having me. So, Mr. Wise, what are the implications of giving animals rights? Well, the animals that we're talking about right now, giving rights, are such animals as chimpanzees and pygmy chimpanzees or bonobos, possibly the other great apes. The implications of giving those non-human animals rights are that you, you can't experiment on, uh, on them anymore, you can't imprison them anymore, you can't torture them. Uh, they would have rights that would be similar to a two or three or four year old child. And do you envision them defending themselves in the courtroom someday? There's been some talk that 10 years down the road you might see a great ape sitting on, a, on the stand across from a prosecutor. Or is that all too far-fetched? Well, they wouldn't be sitting on a stand across from a prosecutor, but it is not too far-fetched. There, there will quite likely be the first cases that will come down seeking to establish such a fundamental right as bodily liberty or bodily integrity for a great ape like a chimpanzee or a bonobo. Do you have a problem with all that, Mr. Schmaman? Yes, I do. I think that we must clearly distinguish between animal welfare, which all decent people are in favor of, and that is that cruelty to animals is something that demeans us as people, and constitutional rights, including the right never to be killed for any human purpose. Animals are abused, but it remains a big leap to say that the only way to remedy this is to give them access to courts and to lawyers. Do you think that's what they're really saying, that that is the only way to remedy this? Or, or, or don't you, in fact, think this would help in, uh, improve the treatment of animals? No, I think that what the animal rights movement, uh, specifically the lawyers who are involved in the animal rights movement, are trying very hard to do is to, in fact, give them access to courtrooms and lawyers and the ability to bring lawsuits and to be litigants themselves of their own right in court. Mr. Wise? Is, is. Is he, he's basically accusing you, I guess, of, of creating frivolous lawsuits, no? Oh, I don't think he's accused me of, uh, accusing me of engaging in frivolous lawsuits. I, I think if he were the judge, uh, he would find against me. Uh, but uh, we, we do believe that the way to remedy serious wrongs against any creature, whether that creature is a human being or a non-human animal, is by giving them rights. That is something that we have learned through hundreds and hundreds of years of Western law, that the way to protect people's most fundamental interest or any creature's most fundamental interest is to give them rights that 
that act as a barrier against others trying to harm them. And what's good, what works for human beings, whether they're adults or children, will also work and must work for chimpanzees and other animals who might be, who might be good candidates for legal rights. So, Mr. Schwalman, if, if you don't believe that uh, investing them with rights is, is going to improve their treatment, what do you think the answer is? Well, I think that we have on the books in most states and at the federal level laws that require that human beings treat animals well without gratuitous cruelty. There is a whole series of protocols and other requirements that govern animal research, that govern farming, and that govern the way in which we interact with animals. That's a far cry from attempting to embroil animals in the issue of rights, which is a political construct that really relates to the way human beings deal with each other. Rights have uh, come with obligations and come with the whole variety of other issues that accompany how we deal with each other in a political system. I don't think that animals who lack the capacity to reason and who lack the capacity to make moral judgments really are able to participate in the rights structure of our society. And in fact, what Mr. Wise really is inviting is a huge bureaucracy to intervene between humans and animals in almost every facet of their life, either a government bureaucracy or an army of lawyers like Mr. Wise, who will tell us what those rights are, and in fact, I think encroach quite seriously on the liberties of all of the rest of us. Mr. Wise, you get the last word this evening. Well, Abraham Lincoln said, in, in giving freedom to the slave, we assure freedom to the free. Lincoln understood that by giving fundamental rights to the most despised, we assure the fundamental rights of the rest of us. And by denying such animals as chimpanzees who are entitled to have their fundamental interests protected by legal rights, by denying this to them, we actually undermine our own liberties. Stephen Wise, David Schmalman, thank you very much for your time this evening. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate your dropping by. Coming up, we're going to change our focus quite a bit. President Clinton faces the cocaine question, and Britain's Prince Edward turns the camera around. Freeze frame. Freeze frame. Freeze frame. We're going to tell you about his documentary that puts the paparazzi in the spotlight. We'll show you a little bit of it when we come back. Just won't close up.